I know summer is coming to a close, but I wanted to share this DIY pergola with you guys. I partnered up with the Home Depot last year. Yes, last year. I was actually pregnant with my daughter, Maya. But anyway, we completely overhauled our junky balcony into this gorgeous outdoor space. And be sure to watch until the end if you're interested in seeing a one-year update. My husband and I started this project in early March and it was still snowing here in New York. The snow plus all of the dirt and debris had to be removed before we could do anything. I'm not gonna lie, the state of this balcony is extremely embarrassing. Look at this, that's nasty. I also had to let go of my old barbecue grill and the extra wood that I didn't have use for since this balcony was also kind of like my woodworking space. Next up, we removed the lights and the fence that was there so we can clean the deck and the railings later on. My son is absolutely adorable and he's so cute. He tried sneaking through to help me take the fence down. Go back inside. Go back inside. And he tried to coach me while I was taking the fence inside. So adorable. So we carry yes, Papa. Eat it upside. <laughs> Eating outside. You can't pull it right now, okay, baby? <laughs> I appreciate the help, but you can't pull it. Donald, let it go. Next, I started sanding the railings and the spindles since that's where we'll be touching most of the time when the balcony is nice and complete. If you really want to be thorough, you can also sand the floors if they needed it, but mine didn't, so I skipped this step. After I was done sanding, I swept the dirt and the sawdust from the balcony. And I even went a step further and removed the dirt and the sawdust in between the wood with some scissors. I'm not sure if there's an actual tool for this, but I just used whatever I had on hand and it worked perfectly. And here you can see the difference between where I cleaned it and where I didn't. The next day, I cleaned the balcony with a cleaning solution and a pump sprayer. And I'll go ahead and list everything that I used in the description box below for you guys. I sprayed a generous amount until it foamed up like this, and then I let it do its thing for about 20 minutes or so, and then I scrubbed the floor with a deck brush. After I was done, I hosed everything down and I let the balcony completely dry. After a few days, I sealed the wood with a clear sealer, and I opted to use the same sprayer to spray the solution and then used a brush to distribute it on the wood. I really like the fact that the sealer goes on milky and kind of iridescent, so I know where I started and stopped. Just make sure you don't have rain in the forecast for the next couple of days so it can fully dry. Building the pergola was by far the most fun, but I also underestimated just how long it was going to take for us to build it. Because this is a renter friendly pergola, we won't be drilling any holes in the deck. Instead, we'll use cement buckets to anchor the structure down. To make them, I measured the posts at nine feet and I cut all four down to the same size. My kids were super interested in what we were doing, so we had them set up on the other side. Don't worry, they were nowhere close to the miter saw. Moving on, I cut a one by six down to the same size as the bottom of the bucket and we found the center. I place the posts on top of the 1x6 and mark where the brackets should go. I also numbered both the 1x6 base and the corresponding post so I knew which ones went together. I marked the rest of the posts and the bases, then pre-drilled some pilot holes for all of them. When I was done, I drilled the brackets to the base and placed the corresponding posts to line up with the brackets and drilled those into place. I noticed that if I did it right, the base and the post will stand upright on their own with no support. Next, we placed the post and the base combo on a stool that we had, which made it so much easier for us to attach the bucket. We secured the bottom by drilling some pilot holes and adding a deck screw to the center and the regular wood screws to either side. He's so cute. Donald, you have your little your um, drill too. <laughs> Once we were done, we measured about three inches of water to the bucket and filled the rest with some fast-setting cement. 
I was holding the post in place while my husband poured the cement and this stuff sets super, super quickly. It sets in just a few minutes, so holding this in place and making sure it was nice and straight was a vital step. We mixed the concrete with some scrap wood to make sure it was the right consistency and added some more concrete if we needed to. And I also kept my eye on the post level to make sure it was nice and straight until the cement set. This was honestly trial and error. We had no clue how to use this cement. It was very different. And some of the buckets had too much water and some of the buckets did not have enough water. So we used the leftover posts to make sure that the cement set overnight at the correct angle. The next day I checked all of the posts and thank God they set perfectly and I began sanding all of them down. I should be wearing a mask here, but I completely forgot. When I get into a project, I just get so laser focused that I don't remember to do anything else. Plus, I blame pregnancy brain here. After all the posts were sanded down, we removed the bucket handles and I used some outdoor spackling to decorate the bucket so it doesn't look so bucket-like. I filled the grooves and went in with some more spackling and decorated the outside as if I was frosting a cake. I'm gonna pause right here and just let you guys know I should have added some drainage holes here. I wasn't thinking um, in the future, you'll see I'll add some plants here and they just completely died because they didn't have drainage. So definitely add some drainage holes here. All right, let's continue. It's been raining pretty bad for the last couple of days. So I decided to bring the projects inside and pre-paint them. You can still see the wood grain, even though um, this is black, and I really love that about this paint. So I have two, and I'm gonna finish the rest of them. When it was nice and finally not raining, I went ahead and I painted the posts black, and I decorated the bucket by painting it with primer off camera, and then I spray painted it with the color that I wanted. After all that was done, I took the 2x4 and I sanded that down off camera. It actually took me a full day to sand down all of the pieces and then we stained it. And yes, I am in my robe because that day was freezing outside. It was at least 40 degrees, <laughs> might have been below 40, and it took the entire day to stain everything. I used two coats of stain to get the color that I want and I'm completely in love. Check out those knots too. I am obsessed with knots on wood. And against the black, this color is gorgeous. I love it. Now we can finally build a pergola. We placed the posts at the four corners of the balcony and then took this long two by six and placed it at the top across the posts. I put a level in the center, which just helped me to determine if the posts were the same height, and thank God they were. I held the 2x6 in front of the post exactly where I wanted it, and I went ahead and I pre-drilled some holes. I didn't have a long enough drill bit, so I had to take down the 2x6 and pre-drill a hole on the actual post. Once that was done, you can see here a little bit better, we added some deck screws and this is just temporary until we were able to add the permanent bolts to the project. We did this on either side and it was finally time to add the rafters. We used some scrap posts on each side to make sure we have even spacing and I also wasn't confident that the balcony was a perfect rectangle, so this pergola might not be a perfect rectangle. So I asked my husband to measure each rafter before he cut it down to size and we also got some help from our friend. Thank you so much Christian because I remember this day was super cold outside but of course I was checking in the progress like a hawk and I'm pretty sure I annoyed them that day. I'd like to think my persistence and my pestering paid off because they did such an amazing job with adding the rafters. Thank you guys so much. After the rafters were added, there was still this huge space to address. We wanted to be able to have some privacy and not look into the neighbor's yard, so I cut down some gutters to the size that I wanted for this space. I wiped them down off camera and spray painted them white. I know it might seem like a waste of time to spray paint white gutters white, but trust me, this makes a huge difference. I cut down this paper one half inch by three inches and I marked on the gutter where I needed to drill pilot holes. I actually made a mistake here and I marked four holes on the back, 
but it should have been just two holes, one on the top of each side. I pre-drilled holes and once I had that done, I took three gutters and I looped the holes on each side. I made sure the measurements were 12 inches between the gutters and measured 24 inches at the top since it loops up and comes back down. So this is where it hangs on the beam. Hopefully this all makes sense and don't worry if it doesn't, I will leave Home Depot's video down below where they explain it in much greater detail. Once I was done with the rope, I added some end caps to the gutter and I drilled some drainage holes for my plants. When we added them to the wood beam, we made sure that each planter was level and added flowers and soil when we were done. I also added some plants to the buckets as well. And here is where I mentioned I should have drilled some holes because fast forward to the future, these plants died because they were way overwatered when it rained. I did some last minute cleanup by burning the end of the rope so it wouldn't unravel and I touched up some of the blacks where it needed to be and I also installed these really nice privacy shades. And once I did all the last minute touch ups, I was done. So after a couple of months of not being touched because of the winter, this is what the balcony looked like. The flowers died, the grass was growing in the gutters, I don't even know how they got there honestly. The herbs died and the pots were all chipped. There are some really tall weeds growing in the buckets and honestly it's kind of gross so I went ahead and cleaned it up a bit. I started by hosing down the deck because I saw some spider webs and I wasn't into touching the bugs directly. <laughs> so I did that and then I removed the weeds from the buckets. And after I was done, I took the grass out of the gutters. I took the grass out of the gutters along with the dead roots and stuff from the flowers last year. After I removed the, the grass and the roots and all of that, I kind of zhuzhed up the soil. I honestly have no clue if this was the right thing to do, guys. I just kind of zhuzhed it up to prepare it for the new plants that are coming in. I went ahead and picked up some plants from Home Depot, but instead of getting all annuals, I got some green perennials that'll grow back next year, and also some nice colorful pink annuals that I'll need to replace next spring. To spread the plants across the gutters, I went ahead and separated them and put them into piles of annuals and perennials. Again, I'm no gardener, but it felt right, so I did it. I added more soil to the gutters and planted the perennials on the top and bottom gutters and left the middle for the annuals. After that, I painted the pots, which I'll show you guys in a separate video, and I put the cushions on and that is it guys. This is a quick refresh from what I did last year. And as for how the actual pergola held up, it held up really, really well. There's some damage to the buckets that I did with the spackling and all of that. And there's also some paint chipping. Other than that, I'm really happy how it held up. What'd you say? I like it here. You like it here? <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching and a special thanks to my Home Depot family for sponsoring this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this transformation and the year update. And if you have any questions that I didn't answer in the video, definitely leave them in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this transformation, please give it a like and also share this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.